Although most of our DNA is packed in the nucleus of our cell, we actually have a small amount maintained in a different structure which we call mitochondria. My lab at the Gurdon Institute works on this mitochondria DNA. Mitochondria convert energy from food to a form that a cell can use. A typical cell has hundreds or even thousands of mitochondria, and each mitochondria can have multiple copies of mitochondria DNA that encodes proteins that are important for this energy converting process. As the individual develops and ages, mutation can occur to some mitochondria genomes. Sometimes the mutant genomes are selectively transmitted. When there are enough of them, the individual can develop mitochondrial diseases. These mutations can be passed on to the next generation if they are also present in the eggs. So far, more than 50 mitochondrial diseases have been described, which affect one in 5,000 people in the UK alone. Sadly, there's still no treatment for any of these conditions yet. We are particularly interested in how this selective transmission of mitochondrial DNA is controlled. We use fruit flies to investigate how mitochondrial DNA influences broad-scale traits at the whole organism, such as aging, longevity, and fertility. Because mitochondrial DNA is only passed down from the mother, we transfer cytoplasm between different Drosophila embryos to create flies containing both the functional and the mutant mitochondrial DNA. And these are, in fact, three parent flies. We then follow the transmission of the mutant genome for many generations. These flies revealed that there is a quality control mechanism to limit the transmission of those disease-causing mutations. But certain mutations can override this quality control and increase its abundance. With the recent approval of the three-parent babies approach, it becomes extremely important for us to learn more about how mitochondrial DNA impacts individuals' long-term health and well-being.